Alright, this video is going to be all about how to color your metal using a torch, otherwise known as a heat patina. So I have a few samples of metal I'm going to show you. I have brass, I have copper, and then I have one shiny, shiny piece of copper for you. So first thing is you're going to need to go to the soldering station. Um, you're going to need a tripod in this case. You will need some um, tweezers to grab your metal, it will be hot, and you will need a quenching bowl depending on how um, you color your metal. The vents need to be on, make sure that you can hear them and you will need a torch. Um, we are going to use a small torch bit and I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna take one of my piece of metal and I'm gonna put it right on the tripod. And then the first thing I need to do is I need to change out this torch head. So I'm going to loosen up the screw right on the bottom and then I'm gonna pull so that it looks like this. And I always wanna make sure that the gas is off. I don't hear it running or hissing at me. Next, I'm going to take the smallest um, torch head that I have, and that is a 180-00. So that is the smallest one. I'm going to do the opposite now. I'm going to push down first, making sure that it's nice and tight, and then I'm going to screw it on. You never want a, a loose torch. Okay, and then I, I adjust it. So now I'm going to light it. I'm going to turn the gas on just a little bit of a turn, like a quarter turn, and I'm going to use my striker to strike flint and give it a spark that will catch that acetylene gas on fire. So you wanna think about a heat patina like painting with heat. So I'm using a small torch head, so it's gonna go a little bit slower than if I were to use a lot of heat at one time, but you have some really cool variations of color if you start off with a small torch. So kind of moving all over the place, the heat patina is not something that you can control too much. The randomness of the color is all dependent on how clean your metal is, um, the surface area of the metal and how hot you get certain areas. So it's going to start off like an orangey color and then it will go towards like a dark red and eventually like a purple or an iridescent color. So I want to stop there because it is possible to add too much heat and I'll show you that at the end of the video what will happen. So this is what a heat patina looks like on an unfinished piece of metal. You have to see a variation of color, really beautiful. And I'm just going to let it cool on a charcoal block naturally to keep the intensity of that color. Remember that it's very, very hot. So I'm going to take my brass and I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did. So I'm going to do a little quarter turn to turn the gas on and then strike it with my striker to catch it on fire. And you'll see that the, the copper is a little bit more vibrant than the brass. You still have some variations of color, but in order to get really, really bright, um, color variations on your metal. You're going to want to clean it, polish it, and have it perfectly finished. You cannot sand and polish your metal after you add a heat patina because you can sand it off and it will go away. And you want to make sure that when your metal cools down that you're not doing a lot of touching to your metal because that will change the color as well. So as you can see the brass is turning those colors. Brass is like a cousin to copper. So it has some similar colors but as you can see, they're, they're more neutralized. They're not quite as vibrant. So I'll hold it with the tweezers because again, my metal is hot. I don't want to hold it with my hands ever, um, but it does catch the light and you can sort of see that pink and that blue and that iridescent color inside of the brass. And I'm gonna put it right on the charcoal block to cool. So I have polished a piece that is mirror shine and I'm going to show you just how different these colors will be than the first two. So depending on what you're making with your metal, um, you can leave your metal a little bit rough and have just a little bit of color, or you can polish it and have some really vibrant, beautiful colors. So you can see how the heat is affecting that mirror shine. You can see the, the heat sort of spreading out. and I'm going towards it and then away from it. I'm also adding a little bit of texture in terms of like circles. That is optional, you don't have to do that. It was just a, a design choice for me. Do you see how, how much more intense those colors are? So I'm satisfied with my heat patina on this. I think it looks really cool. I'm gonna let it cool down naturally. And as you can see, those colors are very intense. I'm gonna take my tweezers and put it back on the charcoal block. You never want to quench it in water if you want to keep your heat patina, only because it's going to lose the vibrancy of the color. 
Okay, so now I'm going to show you what happens if you add too much heat, because it is possible. Heat patina should not take you a very long time. For this purpose, I'm going to switch to a big torch tip just to save some time. You generally don't want to use a big torch tip for a heat patina. It's too much heat at once, and you're going to get what's called fire scale. So the torch here, the hottest part is that, that light blue cone tip on the inside. And you're like, wow, look at all those amazing colors. I'm doing an awesome heat patina. I'm going to keep doing it because it's so cool. And you know what? It is cool. But what you're doing is you're damaging your metal. And you're adding what's called fire scale. So when you take the heat off, your metal is going to be completely black. You've damaged your metal. And it might be the effect that you want, but it's not going to stay and it's not permanent. So if this happens, you're going to quench it in the water because, again, it's extremely hot. Once it's in the water, you can take it out with your hand because it cools instantly. And you can see the fire scale. It's a little grungy, a little dirty. So I'm going to take it over to what's called the pickle. And the pickle is going to clean all that fire scale off. So I'm going to put it in the big pickle because it is a copper solution. We'll talk about the super pickle in a different video. But I'm going to let it sit in there for five minutes and my metal will go back to its copper color and I can redo the patina at any time. I want to make sure that I am grabbing it out though with these copper tongs that are found directly on the side of the pickle. So five minutes and it should be done.